Disclaimer, we'd like to note before the start of this interview that the opinions about to be expressed by the guest on tonight's Get and Sell the Experience podcast are that of the guest and do not directly or necessarily reflect the views of the host of the Get and Salty Experience. You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. Hello. I didn't do it like he does it. He puts his head back. Hello, Bucky Casta. That's who I'm doing the shout out tonight to. That's my uncle Bucky. Welcome back to the Getting Salty Experience podcast. This is the only one that brings the firehouse kitchen tables. To you, legends, guys that got on in 1960. Most of you guys weren't even born in 1960, but this Psst, gentleman. You weren't even born. born. No. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, even, oh, right. 72. 72. Oh, by the way. Uh, you, you weren't even born in 19. Yes, but this guy was doing it, Stephen. He was doing it up there in 1960. I was doing yep. I was up there doing it. He was. He was up there doing it in Brooklyn. He wasn't oh. even on a year. He had the he had the uh, the plane crash, right? He had the uh, constellation. Had the constellation. A, yeah, man. What about a shit yeah. sandwich? You heard yeah. about first bad, bad luck Charlie, right? You ain't kidding. That's bad luck Charlie, <laughs> all right. Oh, well, he's doing something right. He's eighty eight years old, so he's yeah, might be good God luck. Bless him. God bless him. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. Bucky Castro, I gave the shout out tonight. Was my uncle Buck. Yeah, we have a photo of him. Let's let's get it we up. There he me is. And my brothers, me and my brothers went to see him. Uh, had four over forty years on the job. Started out in engine two thirty two, section two, I believe. Wasn't seeing much fire back then in the sixties. Nah, yeah, nah, I wasn't seeing uh, much. Two thirty two, but you know what? The guy in a wheelchair and everything still loves <laughs> to talk about the job, bro. Still brought a smile to his face. Yeah, love talking about putting his sticks up. Love talking about going to fire. There's Chief Steve on the left. Old Man River. Yesterday was his birthday. Oh, happy belated, Steve. Yeah. Big 66, double sixes. That's my other brother. How old is your brother? It wasn't a fireman, my brother on the right. That's Tom. How old is who? Uncle Buck. 86, 87, something like that. He was like a burly guy, too, man. If you saw that guy, he was a big dude, man. Burly, jolly. He was jolly. Like a big jolly guy, man. Always at my house. Always, right, Ruff? Oh, yeah. Always there. He worked with your dad too, right? Wasn't he? He went to ended up going to yeah. 140. Oh, yep. he was in the was was show. He went to 140, but he was doing it back in the early days. Love. I told him he should have went to soccer. He was such a buff, too, man. Love the job. Love the job. Was he? Yeah. Oh, big time buff. <clears throat> Anywho, <clears throat> Gonzo was a big buff, too. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Listen, it's all something we're drawn to, I guess. You know, he only puts like family and Yankees, but you turn, you pan that around, and he's got forget about it, bro. He's got the. the, the uh, the I would take the camera around. and turn it around so you can see the uh, statues and the fire trucks. Yeah. And stuff remember, and stuff. remember you told about the patches that you took off old shirts. That he's got them all. This guy, right? Can you give the Gonzo? Oh man, yeah. I do have patches too. I, I just I have the shit everywhere. Just you yeah. Know. Yeah. Well, the play the non-buff, but we know buff. he's a buff. I love the buff. job. Listen, yeah, you know the oh. story. Every so, one so, of us. Don't don't afraid to admit it. You chased fire trucks on a bicycle when you were a kid too. For me? Yeah. I mean, we all no, did. No. Come I on, man. I don't know if I did that, but I think I pulled hey. the box a few times. I know that. <laughs> yeah. oh, you better just not, as bad as set your own fire. My father would have slapped you. Now, it was probably one forty coming to rewind it, but I definitely well, yeah. did it a couple of times. Yeah. Well, tomorrow, Ruffy and I will be at the Long Island Expo. Yes. Booth 142. And here's a, another little treat for you. On Saturday, if you come sometime early, late morning, early afternoon, Paul Hershagen will be there signing his book, 100 Years of Valor. So come and see the living legend, Paul Hershagen. Have him sign your book. Have him sign your shirt. I don't You're going to be feeding him bourbons. We'll be feeding him bourbons. You won't know where to hit him. He'll be signing, be uh, signing it, Cliff. Yeah. <laughs> All the best. Love Cliff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, so come and see us tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday. I know uh, something's coming. I know Procaccini's coming. Yep. Oh, I'm not going then. Well, Procaccini's bringing his old lady. Now you're coming. Oh, uh, I'm uh, going. Yeah. 
He's bringing his old lady and a bottle of, of uh, whiskey, Jack? maybe. I don't know what he's bringing. And a, so, thong, a bottle of red. Thong, thong. How yeah. about a thong to the thong thong? On him or his wife? Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know, all right. Oh, oh you, know. you know. All right, let's get to the commercial so we can bring uh, Mr. Charlie in. All right, here we go. Established in 1930 and under the current ownership since 1987, the New Jersey Fire Equipment Company handles a complete line of fire department equipment and supplies. Headquartered in Greenbrook, the company operates full 3M Scott service facilities in Ridgefield Park and Toms River, staffed by 10 fully authorized Scott certified technicians with a fleet of six fully equipped service vans. All New Jersey fire technicians and sales representatives are active or retired firefighters, officers or chief officers, career and volunteer. They understand the business and the importance of their work. New Jersey Fire has represented Scott since Earl Scott entered the SCBA business at the end of World War II. Among other leading manufacturers represented by New Jersey Fire are Globe and Firedex Turnout Gear, Mercedes Hose, Task Force Tips and Akron Brass, Hygienol, Fire Hooks, Arctic Compressors, MSA Carnes Helmets, ChemGuard Foam, Alkalite and Duo Safety Ladders, BA Face Shield Protectors, Truckman's Choice Saws, Groves gear racks and washer dryers, SuperVac fans, RPI, Streamlight, and many others. A New Jersey incorporated and based company, sales and service are limited to the state of New Jersey. Find us now at www.njfe.com. That's www.njfe.com. Patty Lee said he would come, but he found out it was $28. He's on a fixed income. So listen, Patty, you come out there, Louie and I will pay for you to get in. I will even throw a hot dog down your throat. <laughs> oh. So I boy. dare you. I double dog dare you to come out. Put that thing up from John Delmhurst, too. Delmhurst. Yes. Yes. There he was buffing. He was buffing in 248. Yes. In what year? 63. 1963 to 73. Well, John, you must be an old. Uh... And Garrett Lindgren's yeah. father was his first captain. Very cool. Yes, I don't see Garrett in the chat much lately anymore. Yeah, he's kind of busy. He's moved on to bigger and better things. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Who knows? All right, let's get him in here. I don't yeah. want to fall asleep. Yeah, we're this. ready. Was it Are waking we ready? Up? Uh, Bill, yeah. Bill, you ready? Here we go. <laughs> Bill, all right, coming to the great. stage. Eighty-eight-year-old FDNY captain Charles Solon. <laughs> there he is. Looking good, Cap. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no lying, please. No. <laughs> we only tell the truth. I swear to God. I told him uh, in the pre-show. I'll sign the papers. You tell me where I get the, the contract that says eighty-eight. I'm signing it. Yeah, uh, until you're eighty-seven you. and three quarter, then you might not sign it. Looks good. How do you feel for eighty-eight? You feel How do I fine? feel? Yeah. I I guess 88, really. <laughs> <laughs> Everything hurts. <laughs> it does, it does. Yeah. Sometimes more than others. Uh, yeah, You're yeah. still smiling, Charlie, so hey, I like it, Cap. I get around. That's all that matters. I got a lot of support, a lot of family. Great. Yeah. All um, right. Well, I'll be fine. You know what? We got to get patriotic. I almost I almost talked that turn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you, you're okay. It's all good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Stand by. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Boom. Still gets me right there. Right, Charlie. After all these years, still oh, get yeah. you. Now we're gonna go back. We gotta go. We gotta really, Ruffy, start cranking the time machine. Because when we go back, oh. we gotta really crank the time machine to go oh, back here. Wish I had yeah. for that. Let's go back to those early pictures, bro. That uh, his son sent us of, of a very young lad. I we're gonna go here. I'm gonna bring this one up if you guys are okay with that one. Now, who is that? Well, that's it's me. Like, uh, Joe DiMaggio. No, that was 
a high school uh, playoff of a city championship at the Ebbets Field. And that so, was uh, 1952. Wow. 1952. So you grew up in Queens, right? I grew up in Queens, yes. Astoria, Queens. Uh huh. I guess I could say uh, until well, I was there while we were married and uh, moved to Valley Stream uh, in uh, 61. Well, it's a while, right? What uh, you come from a big family? What What did your pops do? No, my father. Well, he worked for a moving van company, and his father worked for this for the uh, same company for a while. But his father delivered coal, and my wow. father worked as a furniture mover and a, and a first storage. And and you soon thought to yourself, I ain't doing that, man. I ain't moving no furniture <laughs> around. I ain't shoveling no coal. <laughs> that ain't for me. <laughs> so you played baseball, right? Because I heard your son say played you baseball. And I guess while in high school, but maybe I should have did some more studying, beef, but they had me believing I was going to be a ball player. Uh -huh. I was... Doing a lot of things. Is that oh, you? Yeah. That's you right there? Me. That's me. I had to. Wow. The, yeah. They, he was a catcher. They, but the Cleveland, Cleveland wanted to know what I was doing. I said I wasn't sure at that time if I was going to uh, go to college or not, and uh, which I didn't. And then, uh, uh, well, it, 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 well, I can say it wound up after playing ball. But I guess the Phillies, the Philadelphia Phillies are the ones that wound up offering me a, a, a contract. But it was, they, they wanted to give me $200 a month and send me to class. And I said, no, that's not for me. I worked out at the Yankee State. I spent three days at Yankee Stadium working out. And at the end of the third day, their scout, which the head scout was uh, Critchell. His name was Critchell. And Incredible. He, brought, he brought me aside and he says, he, can, can, he didn't say, can. he says, Charlie, he says, somebody should sign you. He says, but we can't. We got more catches than we know what to do with right now. And they did. When I look back at their system, they had catches all over the place. I mean, and even one of the catchers became their manager, <laughs> Ralph Alk. I mean, so yeah. So I, mean, I, I, I wound up uh, uh, an all star. Uh, I wound up playing uh, uh, in a Journal American uh, All Star game where the, uh, the the city All Stars played the. Uh, I think that was this one right here. Yeah, there it is. We played the uh, U.S. All Stars. So I mean. That's awesome. Hey, it, it was, and hey, I got, like I said, I have no complaints. I have no complaints. Uh, uh, if it was disappointing at the time, maybe I didn't realize it, but I, I don't know. I, I, I believe in God and God knows best. And I relied on that and he guided me wherever I went. And I'll hold that to today's thought. So, I got you. so what, what made you want to be a fireman then? Did anybody I made me be a fireman? I had an uncle, his name was Vin Haley. And uh, he, he, was, uh, uh, he was the husband of my, my aunt. My aunt was my father's sister. Well, anyway, Vin, Vin Haley was a... Uh, a, a custom inspector, but he liked the fire department and he, he belonged to what they called the bell club. Yeah. The, wow. bell, the bell club had, had a room in one of the hotels. I forget the name of the hotel, but he brought me to that room. And when I think of it, I look at that room, it was wide open and it was constructed and it was positioned like you would go into a firehouse. The house watch desk they had with the bell system. They had a sink. They had the coffee. They had a table. There was, and the members, members would frequent this place day in and day out. 
and they would monitor and they would take turns at the house watch desk like they would in a firehouse. And they would sign a journal. They would be they would record the alarms that came in and they would say, hey, we got a fire at such and such. And if it became a magnitude of fire, I mean, a, a, a fire to talk, that these guys would get up and get on their way to the fire. And at that time, the Bell Club was recognized that they were given uh, IDs that could get them within the fire lines. I mean, a lot, let's face it, the public is, there's a line drawn and nobody goes within those lines, but these, these members and whatnot had IDs and they were, they were allowed to get, go into the fire lines. I never heard that. Well, that, I think, wasn't Sarno's father a fire, uh, a bell cup no, guy? My uncle, no, his father, his son became a police officer. I think you might be right, Coop. Yeah. All right, so you go to the Bell Club, and that, that's when you got bit by the bug? Well, th that I, yes. Yeah, that, that, and also, I, I wound up, I worked for an electrical distributor, Gray Bar Electric. And, and while I was there, things were happening, and th they were an employee-owned organization, and they, they had salary bonuses. But they all of a sudden, it became that you had to be 30 years of age, and you had to have five, five years or more to get the maximum of their bonus, and I didn't, I didn't fall into that category. So I was, I would say, PO'd, right? Yeah. So anyway, I wound up. I, my mother-in-law, God bless her. Uh, one night we're talking, and she knew I was unhappy. She said, "Charlie, then you got to go civil service. You got to go with the civil service." I said. Well, Sanitation, no, I don't want to pick up people's garbage. And, and the way it was, the police department, there was no cause. There was guys that were given a post and they would walk in the post, post, right? Yeah. Walking post. Walk in the beach. Right? And if there was uh, bad weather, they would be standing on a corner. And I said, no, I said, I don't want to be a policeman. I said, and they said, well, fire. I said, well, fire, yes. I, I, I think I'm going. So I wound up taking a test, and the rest was great. History. <laughs> the rest we'll get to. <laughs> what, what year did you take the test? You got on in 60. Do you remember when you took the test? I got on the test. I believe that the uh, it might have been 58. 58. 58, I believe the test might have been. And uh, I, I got on. 1968. I might have been, I might have been on close to the middle of, as far as uh, and everything. And they I, called you. I got, I got appointed then in uh, uh, October of uh, '60. Uh, they swore us in on the 26th, effective the 29th. How does he remember uh, these things? I, I don't remember what I had an hour ago for dinner. <laughs> I swear to God, I don't, I'm like, what did I have for dinner an hour ago? Wait, what, what are we doing right now? <laughs> I, um, I guess my family can. I'm a little nutty with figures and nuts. I could probably go through 18 grandchildren and tell you their birthdays. That's crazy. So, I mean, this, this is the way it is. There's different telephone numbers I know. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you. Hey, I could tell you about how did I get to 104? There's a story behind it. All right, let's oh, not get to oh, that yet. Hold on, let's we'll not speed up. Start before I, don't, no, I don't want to rush on. No, no, no we don't want to rush on. on. Like, it easy. We don't want you to rush on. <laughs> what was the starting pay, Charlie, when you went? What are, The starting pay, $3. I think, was 3800 a year. Wow. 3800 a year. And then that was in October. And then January 1st, there was a pay raise of $200. So January 1st of 61 the, 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 the pay rate was $4,000. So mm. that's where it was at that time. Well, he didn't go to the firehouse right away. Oh, right? Back then you would go, right? You'd go to a uh, firehouse first before the academy? Right. No, I wound up when our first day I had to go to uh, the 11th division was in the quarters of 229 and 146. And there had to be 15 or 20 of us. 
uh, a hundred, a hundred were appointed, and they guess they split us into 50. 50, 50 were going to school pretty much right away. And maybe it was alphabetically being, uh, I was Solon and I think of the, some of the names, Pollinger and whatnot, towards the end of the year. But anyway, we, uh, uh, some of us went to the 11th division and others, others went to different divisions. Well, when we got to the division, the, the deputy came down and we wound up each given a folder and each folder was, we were given a, what they called a, this is your base company. My base company was ladder 106. So I had to go to report down there. As soon as they dismissed us, I went to 106. That was on Greenpoint Avenue in, in Greenpoint. But anyway, when I got there, okay. The, the captain happened to be working that day and the chore was, well, they, they were prepared for a, annual inspection. And I, I believe every piece of metal that was used in the construction <laughs> of that firehouse polished. was brand. <laughs> That's what I did, I think, for the whole day was polished brass. That's it. When you, and, and at that time, the firehouses, they weren't given rags or anything. There were balls of twine that would just, I mean, if you if you took it apart, you would be, get a string. You would get a, a, a ball, a, a string. But they were, but anyway, we polished, we I polished brass. And we didn't, the first day there, we didn't turn the wheel. The next day, all right, it happened to be a lieutenant working. And that, his name was Iorio. And fine, he, he was, he talked to us uh, with, he talked to me, well, at that time it was only me at the Proby and that house at that. He, he talked to me and, and enlightened me of, what goes on in the firehouse and the rules, which was very good. He was good. And we did have a run. We wound up with a, a, a rubbish fire that was uh, in a vacant lot, but the fire lapped up onto the side of the building and we had to uh, scrape the shingles down and everything for the engine then to uh, um, wash down. And the, the engine at that time, was engine 215 who was on india street india street yeah they would shortly after they would disband it they were yeah. done away with well okay leaving that they wound up giving a, a us a detail we had to go to was which was a part of the uh, uh the shops the shops would on off of uh, Greenpoint Avenue, but on the upper point was an uh, uh, office. There was an office like and a and a structure. And we they the probies they were introduced in what was what we called uh, uh, a probie training to the firehouse. They told us what was expected in a firehouse, making the coffee. They taught us how to make a, a firehouse bed. This is the way every bed in the fire department is made. And that's how we were taught. And it, it progressed. Right. And we had night training. And that led us to later on in that month, later on, while at night training, we were at Randall's Island. At one time, they called it Welfare Island. But anyway, while we were there one night, a fire erupted down in Manhattan, 199 box. That was on, I, I believe, the 16th of November. But anyway, down at the fire, the chief of the fire said, hey, there's probies. Get the probies down. And so they put us on a, a rig, a CD rig, and they brought us to the fire. Well, when you realize at that time in 1960, there was no radios, and you didn't see, you didn't see masks, and you didn't see power tools. So what they used us for was their communication. So they broke us into pairs, and they, they came over and said, hey, the chief wants you to go to the, the roof of this building where they were operating a line across the street. 
Now the fire was grand in Broadway in Manhattan and they were, they had a line and it was going in across the street into the fire building. Now this building was a textile building. Uh, it was, I believe at least five stories and it was, it seemed like it was fully involved. But anyway, we get, we get up to the roof and I said, the message was by the order of the chief of department shut down and the engine company, who the heck are these? <laughs> <laughs> and then one guy says, what well, is he saying the chief of department? Well, okay. All right. We're, we're going to shut down. So we go downstairs. Yeah, fine. Every point. <laughs> well, it wasn't how many minutes later, get back up and tell them to open up. <laughs> Back up, open up. Oh, yeah, yeah, now that's up. <laughs> you can imagine the comments that were made over things like oh, that. Oh, my God, that's okay. awesome. We get back down, we get back down, and then all of a sudden, hey, go up to the third floor. There's a company operating a line, which they were out the window across the street, and we leave that company. And the two of us went up there and I mean, okay, so we held the line out the window across the street and only, it didn't seem that much uh, later, they came up and they said, hey, they want you back down on the street. Well, I mean, <laughs> when you think about the time elapsing and whatnot, finally the building was, they, they said, okay, it's under control. But in the meantime, there was three firemen missing. And so they're searching and they did recover them. They've recovered them in the basement. Now imagine this huge textile building, when they got deliveries and it went into the basement or the cellar of the, the there wasn't conventional steps. They just had chutes. So everything when they got delivery that was dumped on a chute and the chute just so well. What had probably happened was these firemen who had to go down because of the body of fire at the time, initially, they were down there at the beginning of this whole fire, probably. They hit this chute and they were, well, they, that's where they were found almost at the end of the, of the thing. And they said that the, the what at that time, they had what they called the, the masks. The masks were called MSAs. Mm -hmm. And it was a demand type. And an MSA was, it was MSA because it was called mine safety apparatus. This is what the coal miners used when they were digging in. Well, anyway, okay. Well, they found, they found the fellas and that was, that, that was a time. And then the rest of the thing, well, they knew they had, had to get us back uh, because of the uh, time. When we were at a training, our training period was from 5 p.m. till midnight. So we, we helped drag some of the fellas that I mean, we, we run, we were doing the, the messaging. Some other guys were dragging hoes. So anyway, we wound up getting back on the rig and going back to the island. And that was the end of that day. Hey, so Cap, that, those guys, were they they found alive or were they passed? Oh, they found the three of them died. Wow. The three of them were found, they were found DOA. At the in in a in a basement, uh, just about filled with water. So you weren't even on the job a year yet, and the, you were right. already three guys passed already. Right, there was the three guys, and we finished that that probe. That part of the training was called uh, engine training because it was fittings. We sat with in the and the officer. While well, it was a, a, a chief that would. Give us a little problem. Okay, we got a two and a half inch male. We got a, you know, a three, a three inch female. How do we put those two together? And we had to go grab fittings and put it together. And this was all part of the training. We got out of there and then they sent us to 68th Street. Behind 16 truck was this big open yard and they gave us ladder training. They put up an aerial. We would climb the aerial with to, without a tool and then with a tool and and the handling of uh, uh of portable ladders and at that time most of the portable were all truss wooden 
trust ladders. We didn't have metal extension ladders at that time. And they would, they, we were instructed on how to handle that, how to bridge, how to carry, everything. And of course, the fire department had the so-called life nets. And they would, let's face it, when you look at it, it's, it's quarter full. Well, you had to open up and then open it up. And you had this 10-foot ring. And, okay, all right, who wants to, okay, I, so, here, I'll go up and jump. <laughs> I go up to the fire escape or whatever it was, and I, I jumped into the net. And the officers, thank you. But a part of that, another part of that story, now I jumped ahead, it was very, when we first got there, they lined us up and they said, okay, we're going to put you in size places, all right? Okay, who's six five? One guy gets up. All right, moves on. Definitely six, not Coops. Another guy. Six. Then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, wait a second. What about? I'm six six. He didn't respond. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of it, but uh, that was it. And then after the ladder school, they we all were given. Uh, a schedule, and we wound up rotating into various companies. I followed, there was only one of us at a time in a company. My The first company I went to was 230 Engine. And in there, you, you, you had days, you worked five days, you worked from nine to five. You were all 48 hours, you came back, and then you worked nights, and your night hours were from five until midnight. Okay. Well, in there, well, okay, after a couple of weeks, what happens? Comes the 16th of December. 16th of December, I'm in 235 engine, and the guy on watch says, holy miracle, the report is that there was a couple of airliners crashed over in Sterling and Seventh, and whatever box was involved. So, of course, 235, the officer got together. See, what, what, what are we doing? Well, they pulled the card and they looked for their assignment. And their assignment, I'm not sure if it was the second or third. I, I'm thinking it might have been last to one a second. Because when you, you look back, when you look back at the assignment in cards, that when an alarm came in, you got three engines, you got two trucks, and you got two chiefs. This was the initial, but then as time went on, they dropped off. Okay, you don't need a chief. Only one chief has to go. And then, okay, the third do engine, you know, you stay in quarters. If they need you, that's when they it came in with, when an all hands was needed, the third, en the third engine would go. But anyway, okay, air crash, we go. And I believe there was a picture. I believe that's us on, uh, at the, we, we were not there and we had to set up a multiversal. We set up the multiversal, okay. Operated for, for a little while. We were told to shut down, get a hand line and get into the structure alongside the fuselage was down the street and off to the tail section was this corner building, which happened to be a funeral parlor. Well, we got, got to have, but first of all, we got to get these Scots, I'm not Scots, we got to get these MSAs. So we had to go back to the apparatus because you didn't automatically take them. You had to wait to, so you, we brought back the mask, we put the mask on. And all it is, like I said, it was a container with the face piece, and you had to take the tape off the bottom of this canister, which was called Hopcolite. And you, it was a demand sign. You sucked, that's the only way you got air, is if you sucked the air through and hoped that it filtered. And, well, we get into the funeral part, we get to a, we can't, we can't stand there. We got to get out. We can't breathe. Why? Because some of this, embalming fluids or whatnot or from out what from aldehyde. Was, burned, from aldehyde. was burned and it, 
and all it did was make a a a brownish smoke. So we had to back out, and the way we backed out, we felt the hand line that we had stretched to get back out of there. When we got outside, okay, upstairs above the funeral parlor was an apartment, I guess, where the the people lived. But anyway. They, that's where they we wound up bringing a hand line up there and knocking down. It, it was a little fire anyway the, at that time. The office, we went to the window. To, the office says, get away from our window because otherwise you're going to be called down there to sift, sift through the, what he called chop me. And <laughs> it was a total loss. The two planes collided. The passenger plane came down on Surly and 7th. The other was a cargo plane, which wound up in Staten Island. And at that time, it wasn't called Staten Island. It was called Richmond. They didn't name it. How, how many people were on board that, that plane? Excuse me? How many people were on that plane? Do you know, Charlie? I'm not. I don't know enough. They, they, I mean, it was less than 100. I think it was in the 60s or something like that. It's still so a lot of people. At, time, at that time, you didn't have these huge airliners. Right, with, right, right, right large compa you know capacity so hey cap i want to ask you so so first off uh, your son just sent us the picture gun show the picture of the three guys uh because i don't even know if i even know about this fire so we got this is the fire that you were at and the guys that were in the basement yeah uh -huh. and in 30 was it uh, i only have two names here that i see yeah it's kind of cut it. off but at least uh i mean what were you thinking i mean you were at a fire one of your first fires where we had three line of duty deaths and then you go out to the field and you have two planes collide in the middle of the borough. Like what, what, what at any time did you say, Holy shit, man, I don't know if this is for me or what. <laughs> it, that's it. You know, and, and that was it. It was, it was, you know, became part of the job. And maybe that is some of the things that you wind up it being instilled to you that, this is what's going to go on now for the rest. Right. And truthfully, I guess I liked I liked it because I wound yeah, up in it's scary. That would scare most 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 people, I would think. But uh, you know, uh, no, my my father-in-law, God bless him, so had a, had a good friend, a very good family friend. His name was Walter Wagner, and he spent his whole career in twenty-three engine in Manhattan. And he retired. And one day at my father-in-law's house, he says, holy mackerel, he says, I spent on, on whatever number of years, and you've seen more in a month than I've seen in all the years. <laughs> Which was true. Uh, yeah. 128 people were killed and six on the ground. See that? Six yeah. people on the ground, right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I remember that. I mean, we've had a few people yeah, that were at that fire. You. There you go. See, I mean. So then again, right after that, again, we've had a few guys three, who were. Three, three days later then. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm, I'm going into night, a night tour. And 235, crazy. it was the Constellation. The Brooklyn Navy Yard, an aircraft carrier being built, is burning. So we got in there. All right. We happen to, I happen to be working night. And I'm working with the uh, captain and whatnot, and we got to relieve. So at that time, there was no transportation, no, there was no cars available. So we had to get on public transportation. Well, we got down, we got a bus on Bedford Avenue, we got to Flushing Avenue, we got off Flushing Avenue, and we started walking, and all of a sudden, a department vehicle is passing, and the captain grabs. Uh, the the guy they'd show for in there, and he and the guy says just climb on. So we climbed on this thing, and what an odor! But what it was was just a pile of body bags they were bringing to the navy yard because of the deceased. I mean, when we got there, uh, the, the workers. I mean, let's face it, they were just laid out on a on a dock, and you know. But anyway, people, I, think, I think they lost 50 there. Uh, they, I think it was 50 that they lost there, if I remember right. No. But it could have been a lot more. I mean, the guys said that, you know, uh, the FDNY 
did an incredible job at that at that thing. Right. And then and the box that was pulled when it, it wound up 119, they had already located to 105 because of the air crash. And they were still in three days later, they were still relocated in 105. Because 105, I think, was there, there over 100 hours. They were. Well, anyway, back here, the box that was pulled was Kenton Clymer for the Navy Yard. 104 is first due. So they wound up there. But 104 had only a 75 foot wooden ladder. No, and even when I went there, it's a wooden ladder. And they could not reach an area. Where yeah. and I couldn't reach some of the uh, workers. Well, 102 wound up. They were the second the second along. They were special. They were brought in. They had a hundred foot aerial. They were able to get there. They were able to make rescues. Thank heavens. So, wow. When we got there, we relieved. We had to go in to relieve the company, and we had to go across. It was below deck. It was it wasn't the flight deck. It wasn't the first hangar deck. It might even maybe in the second or third deck. But but we wound up. Uh, we had to walk across. Don't forget the constellation was a thousand feet long and two hundred and fifty feet wide. And we had to cross, and we had to go to the far side. I'm not sure the starboard or stern or whatever. But anyway, there was still fire. And we got in there, we relieved the company, and we moved wherever there was wow. a little fire. We and and where we were, I, I don't know anything about the uh, ships, the construction, but there were different ways they went into different locations. When there was a, a bunk room, it wasn't the bunk room for the entire crew. There were sections, there were different bunk rooms in different areas. There was, food and there was cafeteria. There were supplies that were being brought in because of the building and the sections. And the, some of this section was more advanced in the building, but there were still supplies that, and these supplies were burning and whatnot. And there was an area where only two guys could fit to hold the line. Wow. Now, when you think of when you think of the manpower at that time, engines and trucks, there was only a four-man company, four men and an officer. Well, in an engine company, the MPO stayed with the rig. So there's only three guys now going. Well, now if only two guys, I wound up being the fourth guy then, not Proby. And fine. So the two of us were paired in and we we knocked down what we could. And We'd last 15, 20, and then we came out and another two guys. And we progressed to as far as we could. And during that point, we met rescue. <clears throat> and rescue passed us, and they said, yeah. And they told us where they saw a little further. And all they were, they were on a continuous search operation rescue. They were just looking for persons or at that point, there was not going to be survivors, so they were looking for uh, the loss. Well, anyway, around, I guess it was midnight maybe after that. Oh, before that, while we while were there, we just be, the, the story was that the fire department, the chief of the department, the, the, the ship was listing. It was a four-degree list, and the the chief of the department said, we want to cut a hole in to drain. And they were ordering the Marine unit to come in and cut. And the Pentagon's, no, you don't touch that. <laughs> it's a government property. You don't touch that effing boat, you know. But anyway, okay. So the fire department never cut a hole in it. So... <laughs> like I said, we got to a point we wound up taking up. The captain said... Uh, thank me. He says, I'm going to write you up for voluntary duty. I said, well, whatever. I should have been going home at midnight, right, again? But no. So I went to the firehouse. It was whatever. It might have been 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I said, well, I'm not going home now. I might as well just 
hang out till the end of the tour. So that's what I did. Well, it came to be that that Luck kind of, it, you can caught another job. <laughs> uh, we went. We had. We did. We came. We caught us. We caught a small fire in a basement with a one a little spring. You know, not, <laughs> well, after you go to the constellation and an aircraft, well, yeah, any yeah, fire is like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I guess if it was a building, we would have said it was really nothing compared to yeah. that. <laughs> four five four. four. <laughs> Four floors of fire. Ah, yeah. That's easy. That's that's the consolation. Consolation. That consolation, how that fire progressed so fast is because of the fuel. There was a 550 gallon JP4 fuel, and one of the uh, one of the uh, high lows or whatnot was transporting a, one of the steel plates to a, a location. And as they passed this tank, they sheared, I, I don't know if it was a, a, a valve, but some sort of valve or safety plug, and it ripped open the tank, and the tank just spewed every direction, and it went down what they called a, a bomb elevator. And going down... I didn't know that's how it started. Well, now, now this tank was on one of the upper... Uh, uh, levels and on uh, on a hangar, not a yeah, one of the hangar decks. So that fuel is pouring down, and a deck or two below is a guy with the the torch. He's he's doing some welding, and as soon as it hit, not for long he wasn't. That <laughs> went up right. Yeah, right. He probably that was it. So you know what hit him that guy? Went up, oh, went up, up that bomb well and. The, well, the rest is history. Wow. Wow. I feel like we're already, that's like more excitement than my whole He's career. He's still a <laughs> <laughs> We didn't even get out of, we're not even out of this 1960 yet. He's not even signed uh, to a company yet. <laughs> like in three days on the job. <laughs> three days yeah, on the job. He did more, he did more in his first year than we did in our whole career. <laughs> What work as a probie would be 102. We had one job. Now I'm the probie. I'm, I'm taking a hook and the, and the extinguisher, right? So I grab the extinguisher, I start, and then one guy says, We, we won't need the extinguisher, leave it because the building. You're going to shit down the hallway, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I give it to him. Did you? <laughs> and that was another thing with the extinguisher at that time. We didn't have pressurized water. We had soda and acid yeah. extinguishers. Yeah. And I you know that. What was solution. it? You had oh, a mix shit. of solution and you put it in, and then you had the acid that you put in the top so that when you got and you want to operate, you had to turn the extinguisher over, shake it so that oh, the my. acid would mix with the bicarbonate. Pressurize it. That would cre create the pressure. And oh, you would have a stream. And that was, and you also had another type of extinguisher, which was the foam extinguisher. And it was a different combination, but it operated the same way. And when you used it every day, you came back to the quarters, you had to refill your extinguisher. So, I mean, it was, how things changed through the years. Oh, I mean, sure. like I said, in 104, we had a 75 foot wooden, I don't think we, I'm trying to think it. I think 1963 is when we got a secret, uh, a hundred foot aerial. I mean, we didn't get there yet. What, what yeah. did you That's my favorite pictures too, by the way, the ones that he sent. I want oh, to get to those. Oh my oh, God. I freaking love the roof. Yeah. That, that, uh, that wooden aerial. I mean, let's face it. That, that, the Shova had to get up on a turntable and pound the foot on a lever that would kick the bed ladder up. And it was all spring-loaded. This was a high, high, high hydraulics. It was spring-loaded. And it got, and then there was cranks on each side to extend the fly ladder. And then notice that. that was the, <laughs> Had to be in good shape, bro. <laughs> give, you, give you a little story on, a, on a, the wooden aerial. We get relocated one day. Now this wooden aerial has got an overhang of about six feet. The tiller 
is up there. He's on top of the rip. Anytime the aerial had to be used, he had to pull a pin and remove the tiller so that the aerial could be used. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, one, one day we get relocated to 119. Mm -hmm. We go in there. Not relocating the ladder. Sofa, the shoulder's backing up. Now, remember, there's an overhang. It's backing up, backing up. All of a sudden, crash. <laughs> <laughs> Every firehouse and all the rigs, when they back into quarters, there was a bumper. He knew when, the chauffeur knew when to stop when they when hit the When the tire bump. hits it, yeah, yeah, yeah. When the tire hit the bumper. Yeah. That, well, 119 <laughs> didn't have it, a rig with an overhang like her. So our chauffeur just kept going, waiting to hit that bump. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Well, what he heard was the extension going through the rear windows. Uh, well, and at least it didn't hit the out. wall. <laughs> yeah. And, and the, the, the tillerman leaped from the seat. I get and, and his and the tillerman, well, he wound up transferring. And about a year <laughs> later, <laughs> that, I mean, he wanted to go to Queens someplace. I'm getting out of here. And, uh, but hey, I, I, good geez. stuff there. Hold but, on, let me get back to the timeline to see where we're at. It's it's announced and I, I, to... all, I worked rescue, I've now rescued where uh. I even did a stint in the uh, the squad there in the in the uh, three four battalion, and the squad all it was was a bread wagon. I mean, you you didn't have a, a seat; you had a stool. You were a little like you went to a soda shop with a fountain. You had a little red. Stool. That's what it was. There were six of them things in the back of a thing. Ooh, it. You know, <coughs> all I used the really at that time the squads was for manpower. So they wouldn't have to have another company or whatnot. They, they brought us in and we would help with a, a line. And it would be, depend on the officer when it was time to take up. If that squad officer was nice enough to use the men to help them take the line up or would say, okay, let's go and leave leave their lo the line that they might have stretched, leave it there. But yeah, that's what did. And that was, you know, different. Thing. But like I say, then finally, after that stint, like I said, here it is, March. I'm going finally to proby school. Holy shit, he's going to proby school. Oh, wow, yeah. Finally. <laughs> I get a few uh, cold under my belt. <clears throat> then I'll go to school. Finally. So proby school officers really love it because while we were there, the drill periods, we were being taught knots. We were being taught whatever was available in a firehouse. If it was a truck company, it was the, the truck tools. So when we got to probie school, some of these officers, when they went to teach us knots, they would use some of their slang or something. And, yeah, you a wise guy, let me see you talk. And, one of us would go up and we were tired or not that they were trying to teach us. But this this was it. And probie school, six weeks. And the biggest the biggest thing while in probie school was getting the use of the MSA mask. How do you because they most of most of the island at that time was vacant hospitals. So what they did, they tell you to don the mask. No fire, said, just run up the stairs to the roof. No fire involved with the mask on. What, who, let's see who can get to the roof without pulling the mask off. Some of us made it, some guys didn't make it because suck, by the time you get up, you're sucking air like you can all your work. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other part was getting used to a, a hose line with pressure. You know the back, you open up a line, you got a belt. If you So you get used to pressurized lines. And that was, I, I, to me, that was a biggie. That was a big, the one instructor, well, one of the guys, when he opened up the line, he let it go. And that line, 
the instructor is alongside, hit him in the ankle. It's it smashed his ankle. He went. No. Yeah, that's no joke. No. no. I wound up and okay. I went to 104. Now there's a story behind. Somebody knew where I was going the first day I got on a job. Mm. Really? Mm. Why I'm saying it's or fake. The, Mentioned it. The fixer. I was given directions how to get to that 11th division. Was I given the right direction or did I misinterpret it? But I wound up on Havemeyer and South 4th Street in Williamsburg. And when I got off, I said, oh, my God, I'm supposed to get to Richardson Street. I asked Sevilla. I said, hey, do you know where Richardson Street is? No. I said, oh, my God. I said, here it is, 20 after 8. I've got to be there by be fine now. Okay. I said, well, I'm looking for a firehouse on Richardson Street. Well, that was a definitive word, firehouse. You just go down to South 2nd and make a turn. A couple of them. Well, when I went down South 2nd, made the turn and went over, when I got out of my car, 221 and 104. I asked the guy on watch. He gave me the directions down there. Get to North 11th, make a right there. Got me to Richard Street. I got there by 20 to 9. But I said, what? And when I got in. To go back to that spot, right? That's crazy. So holy mackerel. Huh? To go back to that spot, like after you were there already to get the instructions, like that's crazy. It was, it was. I'll tell hey. you. What. And hey, 104, they weren't the busy. When I got there the first year, I don't think they had a thousand runs. Really? Really. But it progressed. Neighborhood changed. Different groups of people moved out, and other groups of people moved in. And Situations change, fires. We started getting fires. I talk about some fires there. I seen, I, I witnessed some decent rescues that would today be written up. Back then, things weren't written up as free. Oh, hat. Yeah. Free. It was all, and we had, we had two, Especially one, Lieutenant Moran. We come out, he would say, Good job, fellas. And we knew <laughs> he would, if anybody said anything, he says, That's our job. This is just the way it is. That's the way it is. And I can say, that on a whole, I would say, We did, I think we did a good job. We did, we weren't the busiest. We, became, we finally made. And I forget the year, but we finally made the top 25 in workers. And the reason we made that is because the TCU units came into being. At that, the TCU tac Tactical Company Unit, that's what they called them, TCU. And the one by us was in 102. So that TCU was called. TCU 702. Seven, of course, being a truck, right? And engine had another one. But their hours came in. They worked, their hours of running TCU was from 6 p.m. till midnight. So 102, they weren't running, or if they run, it's because there was another, another box or another fire and they had to go. And that was on, they were almost like a second, a second section. But that was the year that 104 wound up making, making the number 25. We made number 25 as on workers. But other than that. Hey, Cap, who were who some of the guys there? Excuse me? Cap, who were some of the guys there that you remember when you first got there that stuck out to you that uh, helped you a lot? My first, when I got in there, the, the captain, his name was Yutensky. And he was the pro. I was Being I was a pro, he wanted me to travel to and from in proby uniform, the type of uniform that the probies wore. And he, he Ute, and the fellas that were in there, uh, 
There was one guy, that I would say that was young, but there were the, the old timers. It was like uh, Gene Flaherty, uh, Irv Lundgren, Steve Simkowski, uh, Charlie Pensack. I mean, uh, there'll be a number of guys between both con with the, the skis, the SKI at the end of their name. <laughs> and you know, they were the green point. Yeah, boys. those are green point guys, right? Exactly. Right. Polish. So, but it was good half. No, hey, they, hey, there was the colored or the black or the African Americans and whatnot. They were there was a few of them, not, but they were there. <laughs> In fact, one Stan Hewitt was one of them, and Stan Hewitt, you know, you. I'll get back to the one day. There, there was by. No, Whatever differences that might have occurred in the firehouse, we never used a der derogatory term of any. But anyway, we get we get uh, uh, Stan. Uh, they started talking and whatnot, and he says, "Well, I'm not one of them." He said, "Yeah, I I came from India, you know," and so. One, another guy turn, turns around and says, oh, so when you were kids, you didn't play cowboys and Indians. You 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 played cowboys and Indian, you know, so Indians <laughs> and cowboys. He, he, they, they turned it around, and I just messed it up, too. But anyway. <laughs> so you're left. I learned that, that. I'll tell you, they got me up into the tiller section right away. But by the time I had a year I, I on a job, uh, I I – was tillering. And when you tiller and you're leaving that firehouse, not every firehouse, I don't, maybe nobody will ever remember, is what they called on the side of the building was what they called a slap switch. And it was the tillerman's job going out the door to slap, to slap that <laughs> switch so the doors would close. Come on. That's what it was. And that, didn't last too long because <laughs> I'm sure. the, neighbor, the neighbors all of a sudden knew that nobody would be in the firehouse. So before those doors actually really closed, they could sneak in there. Yeah. Sneak in and do whatever. Yeah, that and a couple of Tillerman lost their arms. So that is <laughs> <laughs> so that was the end of it. It was, was time. Then the, it was the time. <laughs> so you're the tiller man back there? <laughs> anyway, I'll say Gene Flaherty was most of the time he was, if you were working. And also at that time, when you, you look at it, there was only an eight group system in the firehouse. Groups one to eight. The officers' groups were one, three, five, and seven. I happened to go into group two, so I had a, I worked with one officer one day, and my second tour, I'd be working at with the other officer, the way it worked. This is and this is the way it was a twenty four group system, and because you look at it, you only had four you only had four guys, but there was no overtime. Overtime didn't come in until 1972. Hmm. So that played really before that played havoc, mostly with the, the poor engine. Hmm. Because during that time, there was there was no Varazano's bridge. There was no, and let's face it, in the spring. Over in Staten Island or Richmond, whatever at that time, there was tremendous brush fires. Lower Manhattan would be sent over to Staten Island. They would have to get on a ferry and they were transported over there. Well, 221, they wound up relocating to Manhattan. Sometimes those things in Staten Island got so. 21 had to get on a ferry and go over there. When it came time to quit, you're on your own. Hmm. The job didn't say, oh, or take your rig and whatnot, blah, blah. No, 
That was it. That was their attitude. I mean, later on, they started changing things. Yes, thank heavens. Uh, that's crazy, but huh? If in the firehouse, there might have been a guy say, all right, use my car. Let's go. They would have, they would have to go down to Manhattan to the pier. What had happened was the guys would be able to get on the ferry and get back to Manhattan. And the member who allowed his car to be used could use his car to get back to quarters. But now the guys there had to go back by ferry to get the rig. The rig is still over there and do whatever they had to do until they were told to take up. So there was times that guys didn't get back to maybe eight o'clock at night, for heaven's sake. Mm -hmm. so that was, but that was a, I, God, show some of the pictures from some of the jobs. From yeah, I was, uh, I know, but, uh, I'll, um, before power tools, baby. Okay. You want to hang out, Lou, for a sec? No, Lou was, uh, has before a power tools. Well, let's face it. Oh, man. here we go. Here we go. Oh, Boom. There it is. There My favorite is. right there, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that happened. That happened to be, uh, I guess I'm looking at the tool. I know I was a chauffeur because that was a pike, a pike head axe, mm -hmm. and that that was my tool I used as a show. And we were up on the roof, and uh, second alarm, and it was uh, a, a couple of pictures taken that. And like I said, no tool. There, there's another one, and behind me is Joe. Joe Nallen. Good old Bruce Shrank right there, buddy. Oh, oh yeah. This is oh, this yeah. is, and there's the third picture. Who was this taking those pictures, Cap? You remember? Yeah. He he was a former member of uh, 221 Engine, and he was into photography, and he asked for a detail, and he got detailed to the to the uh, photo unit, and he wound up chasing fire, and this wow. happened to be. That's great that you have those pictures. Yeah, he caught them. He caught the moment when we saw talking to the fire too, right here. You see the flame. Uh -huh. so come here, baby. Uh, Look at those chops. <laughs> Look at them chops. Look at those chops, man. Those are sixties. <laughs> They're not even seventies chops. Those are sixties yeah. chops, baby. Yeah. Uh huh. Man. Uh -huh. <laughs> Look at you. Look at the chief's car in the back there, bro. Oh, yeah. I, I wound this up right here. It was a great yeah, photo. It was, it was, it was really is. So now it was, you got some for the Instagram. Oh yeah. Good year, man. Yeah. Good year. That's why I, I use it for the thumbnail. It was a that's a solid pick. So you got out here something about uh 1964 uh squad three, a fireman killed in squad three. Yeah. Uh, that was Mark Watt. And what there was a fire in a Jewish a, a yeshiva school. And it progressed to a point and became a multiple. Well, 104, we wound up going. And we got over it. When we got over, uh, Gus Catanese was the chauffeur. And we had a detail from uh, Rescue 2, uh, Tony Motti, his name was. And what had happened was, as we got just about got there, Wakey, who was... Uh, uh, the officer, I, I don't know if he was one away. No, it might have been still with 2.30. But anyway, he came to a window, which happened to be like the only window on that side of the building. And he screamed, the collapse, men trapped. Well, there was a fence that was too high for the ladder to get in to the angle needed to get to that window. So we grabbed the 35 foot extension and we got, and we went up, we got in the window, we we moved along. And as we moved along, there was, I don't know how many inches of water already on the floor. And the squad, the squad just relieved 102 at that point. Well, the collapse happened and guys from the squad were hit. One guy was cut bad. Well, they wound up getting him a while. But there was still, Marquardt was under the ceiling because it was a monolithic. And the whole thing came down at once. Not in a piece, but the whole thing. Because uh, along the lines, I guess, the school, they built a, 
a, a hanging ceiling rather than just leaving it open. But anyway, Marquardt and Tony and I, we wound up getting to the edge of this, uh, of, of that portion, and we were able to pull up, and some other uh, guy pulled Marquardt out of, from underneath it. We got him out. I was giving him uh, a cardiac, and uh, by the time we got out and started working, a, a deputy, the 11th Division, came and said, I want you out of the building. Get him out of the building. So we took him out of the building. And we went down the stairs into it, and we're in, now we're in the courtyard. While we're in the courtyard, okay, by this time, the medical officer, Ginsburg was the medical officer, comes over. And, oh, my God, we need a tray kit. I don't have a tray kit. Guy from rescue runs across the street, gets a razor, uh, gets the razor blades. And Ginsburg cuts a trachea opening. And what do they need? They use the base of a ballpoint pen, and they placed it into the trachea. And the lieutenant, my lieutenant, who was covering at the time, his name was Hutner, Lieutenant Hutner. And he was, he was blowing into the trach, and every the blood would be popping out. Oh my God! Oh my! And mm. they said the ambulance is there. I'm still pushing on the heart, and we carried him, got him into the ambulance. He was gone because the, the poor guy. I mean, I mean, getting hit the way he got hit and whatnot. He this is to describe it, a bile was coming out of his nose and ears uh, from the, the trauma involved. And he, uh, I believe he was gone, but they couldn't, they couldn't pronounce him uh, gone until he got to the hospital or a doctor examined them. So, but that was Marquardt and that was 1963. Wow. <laughs> Jacked, uh, two years on the job <laughs> holy mackerel yeah we did I, I, and I moved along they, I, I sent me to actually I went to show for school before I was first grade because a couple of the show for them, one uh, got promoted another another to the same the same group uh, Joe Clay, he, he went to the fire marshal. So, so there's two. And that other fellow I told you, Scott, he, he, he was a chauffeur. He, he got transferred. So Moran, the lieutenant, that one night, he says, hey, did you ever drive? I said, yeah, okay. And I, on a side, when I worked on the side, I worked with that, where my father worked, moving company. But anyway, I, I drove their truck. So I said, yes. Yeah. So he said, hey, Gus, let him let Charlie drive. And that's what I wound up. I would, and I learned standard transmission with a wooden ladder. And <laughs> I, wound up, I wound up going to chauffeur school. Uh, in, yeah, we just, I guess I was in chauffeur school just as I turned first grade. It was in October, the end, in October of 63, because when the department order came down that I was uh, given the qualified chauffeur title, it was on the 22nd of November, 1963. And if you remember that day, that's the day President Kennedy was assassinated on the 22nd. Mm. The 20th, it's also one of our granddaughter's birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> but but this, uh, and Okay, I wound up being a show. Yeah. So when details came in, I wound up being detailed. But hey, that was part of it. And then the uh, one part, the, uh, the chauffeur there, he got, Sam Giamo got promoted. When he got promoted, the captain said, hey, Charlie, uh, you, you, you're getting a seat. And I said, well, I said, I don't think I'm in line. I think that so-and-so is in line. I want you to, and I went to the other fellow and I, I said, hey, uh, I said, I don't know what he's doing, but, uh, and Thompson, Charlie, perfect. It's just the way I would like it. I don't want to be, you got it. And I wound up, and 
Okay. I, and I, I guess that was good years for me because uh, I, not to say that, I don't love to use it. That aerial, I, every chance I saw a smoke or something, I was putting the aerial up and going through a window or something. <laughs> One, one job, it was only food on the stove, but the smoke was coming out. And it, as I'm going in, it was the chief that, okay, truck, that's it. We don't do it. <laughs> Take the glass, cop. Take the glass. I always say it. With the new rigs, though, they had, they had, you had a bed ladder pipe already man mounted to your bed ladder. The captain liked to drill on that at the time. When we went out on drill, how to put that thing into operation, as well as putting a, we also carried a fly ladder pipe that we could put on. Well, we had a fire, vacant building, three-story job, only not even two blocks from the firehouse. So we were there in no time. Engine found a, a hide. We said, Put Set the, it up. Put the bad, not only that, 119 had gotten a towel ladder. And when they came in and we got a bed ladder going, they were moaning and groaning. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the towel ladder. But, you shit on that birthday cake, Cap. And we did think. I mean, I, let's face it. Uh, where, there, where there were boxes, you knew who were com was coming in. If you knew you had a chance to beat the... That's it. Ah, there you that's go. It. You that's it. it. You that's know? what I'm talking about. That's, <laughs> and that's what you did. They did the same thing and we did the same thing. All that's fair, I'm baby. There was, there was companies that would search their, their, their response area and try to figure out a way of getting you knocked off <laughs> with a response and them to be in, in grin. So, now we did a lot of this. Now I'm excited. 108 went to a new quarters, and the new quarters were at the end of our 104's administrative district. So, I mean, we played games. We go over there, they're building a new firehouse. We put we would put a, a condemned notice on there that you know this building is condemned, you know. But uh, that was it was all good fun. Good fun. And Hey, guys, were good. We did. We did. We did jobs. Hey, we got. Hey, we got. I guess unit citations. We got a, a number of them. And what about, uh, you, what about uh, your class three here, though, Cap? The class three in seventy one. I I wound up. Uh, uh, let's face it. Uh, over. Uh, uh, what the heck year was it that I wound up uh, uh, with a roof rope rescue? Man, we get that seventy three. Yeah, which, I was gonna say, don't do it though. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking about your uh, oh, your the class three, three, that, the class three that you got in '71. Yeah, I, there it is, Driggs Avenue. Yeah, Driggs. Well, we we came in, company, everything. I wound up, I like I said, I, I, I wound up being a chauffeur. I got in, it was a new law. I went down, I went down the uh, uh driveway. And I'm in the in the courtyard, and the fire is coming out the first. It's into the second, and okay, I got to get on that fire escape. So I used my tool. I was able to release the uh, the fire escape drop ladder. So the fire escape, I went up, and because the way the fire was uh, lapping up, I couldn't use any other any other step. Uh, uh, staff for the fire, so I had to climb over the railing, which there was a window, and I got in the window. And when I got into that window, it, there was a, a family in there. There was the mother, father, and two kids. The two kids might have been three or four years old. Now the fire is lapping around; it's getting it getting hot, and they don't want to leave because what went on is when when apartment people were running out, the bandits were running in stealing. Mm -hmm. And this, this is what happened. And this is what what happened with vacant buildings. If one apartment became empty, that's the apartment they would set on fire and everybody else around it would be running out and they would come in and steal. I mean, I went in a building 
I'm going in the building and somebody's coming down with a television on their shoulder and you know it wasn't there. But this, this is, this is, or they steal. They would steal anything. And All right. So this particular, I, I get into this apartment and whatnot, and they don't want to leave. And I said, we got to get out of here. We're, we're choking. Everybody was starting to choke. There was no mask and whatnot. So I grabbed the two kids and I told them, I'm leaving grab my coat. So one of them grabbed my coat and we we got out of the apartment. When we got out of the apartment, the engine was in, in the, the other apartment and I eventually it had to come in. Well, I was written up and that was it. That's how I got my three. <clears throat> so nice. There was other times, hey, that was one. There's other times I thought I should have been written up and nothing. I think everybody's had those cap. You get stuff sometimes with something you don't think. Hey, you, it happens. It happens. And stuff you think you should have got, you don't get it. That's what happens. But hey, now we can talk about the roof rope. January fifteenth, nineteen seventy-three. Seventy-three. I'm detailed to one hundred eight. At that time, all right. I don't know. It was detailed. Well, I was. A, I guess it might have been overtime because uh, now the picture that's there. There's Pudgy Walsh, there's myself, and there's Arnie Merkich. Arnie Merkich was in Rescue 2 at the time. And this here was a reporter from Channel 7. And he's interviewing us. In the apparatus is Gil Murtha with a mask on, an oxygen mask. Okay, what had happened this fire? I they, they gave me the roof. So I'm on the roof. And at that time, at the time, as you can see in the pic, that there was radios. When radios were distributed first, two, two, two radios to each company. In the engine, it was the MPO and the officer. So the officer could call for water. In the truck, it was the officer and the roof man. So the roof man could let the officer know the roof is opened up or whatever situation is there because he's overlooking a building. So, okay. So the fire is coming up and what, one of the, at that time, the chauffeur, when it was a fire on over, one of their jobs was to carry a roof rope to the roof. To the roof. So Gil brought the roof rope up People are trapped in that apartment, a mother and child. And so we're going to use the roof rope. It's going to be a, a, a roof rope rescue. I said, yeah, I'll go. He says, no, no. And I said, okay, your company, your roof, your rope, go. So hooked up, put them down, got into the apartment. By yourself, nothing to tie off there. So what happened is I'm... I lowered him. I have nothing. I can't tie off anything. Well, I'm down there. All of a sudden, I say, holy God, where? Gil. So I get on the radio right away, and I said, hey, Gil left the rope. He left it. You know, he took left the knot. I can't, I can't abandon the situation because he could come back to the window and need the rope. Well, I'm looking around. I can't tie off because if I could tie off, I'd make I'd go single slide down to him. But anyway, winds up. The rescue was made. The people got out. And Pudgy. Pud, well, the Pudgy and the officer, they did a they had a good partner too. But being with it was a roof rope and whatnot. Gil, Gil got, uh, he got a one. He got a class one. He got a national award on it and fine. But I was I was a detail, right? So when they wrote everything up, they didn't put my name down. So, Come on. So hmm. what happens, hmm. what happens when this came down on a department order? I said, holy geez, you know? So my captain, he got on the phone and he proceeded. And it wound up that they put me in. And at that time, at, at the Totoriello or something, had something to do. And he just said, oh, give him, I forget what, an A or B, just throw him, 
throw him a, a you know a, a symbol. nugget, yeah, a biscuit. Nugget. So that was it. But Gil, Crumb. Gil, I'll tell you, Gil came and says, "Hey, Charlie, he says, I didn't know." He says, "Yeah, I, you know, said you didn't get what you deserved." So he he was good. He was trapped, and you called on the radio. And it was, and and because I was able to use the radio, saying that. He left the rope. He was trapped in there. He was trapped in there trying to make the rescue. And, okay, subsequent, the rescue was made, but with others too. But Gil, but let's face it, the radio was at that time, you know. And then later, hey, a couple of years later, you know, do you know how the power tools really came into the job? They were out there. The other... Other, come other units or outsiders. They had them, but at that time we got a fire commissioner, Safer. His name was Safer. He came from the fire marshals down in Washington, and when he came to New York, he thought he was going to be the police commissioner. That was a, but he became the fire commissioner. And because he became, if he looked at what the fire department had, he says, look at this equipment. They need equipment. <clears throat> order, I don't know, 50 pumpers, order trucks, order. And some of the specifications, okay, we need power. Every pumper that we order, we want two power, two partner saws on every pumper. So as the pumpers came in, they had, there was two partner saws. Well, the saws were put, and they would start handing them out to the busy companies. Well, eventually, we got a power, sir, a power. But that's that was later. I'm, I'm, wait a half. Hey, Cap, when did you start studying? When did I start studying? Oh, I died on a light. I took, for some reason, and I don't know how true it was, there was, there was a test before I was first grade. But they were saying something, no, oh, don't bother. You're not first grade. You can Well, I didn't. I, I took the test in 60, 60, 67. 67, I took the test. Right. I got, I, I really, my wife said, you really didn't want it, Charlie. Because I, I guess I didn't put it. I did whatever the school told me to do and nothing more, and maybe that was uh, detrimental. But anyway, I wound up with a number uh, eight something or 900 on the list. And I, by the time the list and it, it wound up, the World's Fair was uh, uh, in progress. That was another story too. But uh, so, but I, I, the last guy that was made, in fact, he, he had a story too. It was made on the last day, Sawinski, Reginie Sawinski, his name was, and he wound up a lieutenant in 221. But anyway, uh, that list died and uh, I didn't do anything. And then of course, when 71, they said there's gonna be a test in 71, I, I put more effort into it and I made that list. So I'm on that list, but the city became a, pro, a in financial pro, They froze the list. They froze the list like in oh, 74 or 70, 74, I think it was. And guys, guys were laid off. Yeah. There was one guy in the engine and one guy from the truck that were laid off. And where'd they go? They wound up, they were bus drivers for the city. A lot of guys said that, Cap. Yeah. They wound up bus drivers. Now, the one guy that was in the truck, when, it, when they opened it up and allowed them to come back, only the guy that was in the truck came back to the job. But he didn't come back to 104. He went to, he, I don't know, what, did he go to, he went to a, a, a busy, one of the busy, I think he went to 111 truck. That's where he went. And the other guy, I'm not going back to the fighter. He stayed. He stayed, yeah. He stayed. I heard that too. He stayed. Yeah. With the, the bus company, yeah, just another Bronx tale. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> the Saddest thing in life is wasted talent. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> what about uh, you got you got burnt in December nineteenth seventy three, right? Uh, you got promoted. To yeah, that was all at Mormon Street. Uh, yep. We had there was the third alarm. We came in. We were second alarm truck. <clears throat> one six and, and one oh six were first two. Well, we came in. It was a, a wintry day, cold. And okay, I wound up. I was the chauffeur, uh, but anyway, the company went about their business. Uh, Kenny Griff, he, he happened to be the tillerman. He, we got off. We said, okay, we, we there was no spot. No, we no aerial went up anyway. Well, we get it. We got into the adjoining building, and we did what we had to, and there was really no no need for us. So the, the both of us left that building. Uh, one of the exposures, and now we're going. We're looking for our company. So we go over. And now it's a fire company, and as we get into the into the uh, building, an engine company comes down the stairs and out. Apparently, the fire came out the apartment door or something, and this. Company, I don't know exactly if I remember the number, I forget about. But anyway, rescue was there, and the rescue officer says, Hey, why don't you take the line? So Kenny and I took the line and we went back upstairs and we were knocking that fire down. And as we moved along, one of the an ember came down and went down my coat. <laughs> So I wound up getting ooh, ooh. A, burn, a burn on the your chest. So you were doing the dance. So when I got outside, I say, I don't know. I, I think I, I got a burn on it. Oh well, well, anyway, okay, go to Rick, and then the medical officer came. <clears throat> and the medical officer says, "Well, what do you want to do?" He says, uh, "I said, well, I'm go I'm going on. I forget what, whether I was going on at 48 or 72. I forget." And at that time, I didn't want to go to no medical office. So he says, all right. So he said, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's only a slight, it isn't that serious, he said. So let's treat it. Get, take the rest of the tour off. And if you want to go sick tomorrow, go sick. So he left it up to me. He, so. That was it. The rest of the tour. I don't know. Put a little silver oh. dine on it. You were right. You're oh, good. I don't know. <laughs> they, 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 oh, they didn't have that shit back then. <laughs> that was, that was Maybe they did. Long, and so. Uh, All right. So you get promoted. Oh, yeah, we got to move along a little bit. Yeah, yeah, December finally, 11th of 76. 76, finally. Uh, December 11th, 1976, I get promoted. And at that time, the job had what they called the MBO prob, uh, program, Management by Objectives. And some of us were sent right to a company. Well, that's when I got promoted, I was fortunate enough. I, I went right to a company. I didn't just bounce. I went to 292. 292? Well, Woodside. In, in with Rescue 4. Not that busy a company. And I went in there and one of the first tours, the phone is ringing over the loudspeaker. Hey, Lou, telephone. I ain't going. Again, <laughs> hey, Lou. Uh, I'm in the back room and one of the guys says, hey. Hey, that's Lou, you. Telephone. I'm not, oh, gee, they changed my name. I'm not telling you anymore, I'm Lou. <laughs> And a um, short while later, I don't know, did the worm turn or something? Anyway, we got a we got a few jobs. We got some work, and the guy. Of course, guy, it did. You were there. Excuse me. What I said, of course, it turned. You you were the black cloud. Well, we're in there, and the first guy. Well, uh, the first the first one was we had, there was a diner, just about Roosevelt Avenue, Roosevelt and Woodside. Well, we're pulling in, and the signal at that time, yeah, we got a working fire. We got a 1030. We got a working. I no, fin no sooner finished at 
say in a 1030, the rescue officer, make that a 1075, you know? So I said, oh God, we got in there and knocked it down for God's sakes. And when I came out, I just shrugged my, shrugged my shoulders to the chief. And did he know what I meant? I don't know. But things like that, later on came back and they wanted to know, hey, Luke, did you bring your Brooklyn mentality into it? <laughs> of course, hey, that, that, in Brooklyn, that wasn't a seven, that wasn't over 1074. The 1030, yes, there's a working fire. Two and but, two. But rescue, they had a, and, and the, the funny part of that rescue, he went to the same high school and he played on the ball team too. And, oh, yeah. so you knew him too. I knew him. I, I also, while I was there, uh, the guy that was ahead of the, uh, the officer ahead of the burn center, uh, Jimmy Cullen. Yeah, mm -hmm. Curran. I'm, I'm working and uh, uh, in, in rescue is Dylan, John Dylan. Well, Jimmy happens to come into quarters because him and one of the fellas in, in rescue four, they worked on a side together. They did uh, some uh, uh, work. Anyway, I happen to be there. Dylan says, yeah, Jay, this is the engine or Charlie Solon. And Jimmy says, Charlie Solon, you went to Brian. You were their catcher, right? So he, <laughs> he, he went to Brian. And it, it's funny. From that point on, it seems like I met him at different times. I, it, one time was my wife and I, I don't know where we were going, someplace in Manhattan, and he was walking with a couple of guys. And right away, he ran, hey! We just bid hello, what not, hello, how are you? Another time was my wife and I, we were going to the, the hockey game. We were going to Madison Square Garden, the police and fire, the hockey game. And who do I mean? Jimmy. Jimmy Cullen again. So, I mean, uh, and then, all right, I wound up later on, after I retired, I wound up getting uh, burned with a pot of boiling water uh, and... Uh, uh, it was it was pretty bad because when I got back home, the boys said, "No, you got to go." You so they contacted the burn unit, and I wound up in the hospital. And the burn unit was the ones that took care of me. And Jimmy was there. Yeah, he was the main guy. Yeah. In fact, one night. Uh, in fact, one day, one day, my wife is there. My youngest son there. He brought my wife there. And he had to leave for work. My wife is still there. And she didn't know how to how to get home from Presbyterian. So we wound up, they called Jimmy up. Hey, Jimmy, can you put Charlie's wife up? Yeah, they put they sent it to one of the apartments the Burn Center had. And she wow. spent the night there. So that was nice. I mean, that uh, it was so I, I was there and I, I had skin graft and whatnot, but that was. Hey, Cap, I, I want to talk about uh, Tommy Williams a little bit. Tommy Williams. Tommy Williams uh, came into 104 and he came to 104. He came on a job with his brother and his father worked. His father was, was an aide downtown to the, the one of the staff chiefs, assistant uh department or I don't know. But anyway, his father wanted his son to go to an engine and another the other son to the truck. And it was supposed to be 230 engine and 108. Well, what had happened, 108 didn't hit. So he wound up in 104. Tommy was there probably for a year, maybe in 104. And he went, we worked together. He wound up in our group. And we became, what would you say, what would you say, on the job buddies, not so much outside the job or whatnot, but on the job. And he went to an aid, and the same thing. The same thing when, if there was runs or whatnot, another time, an, another, another time, they called, Tommy, Tommy was a, 
He was a trained chauffeur in 108, but he didn't go to school. So one day, 108 needed a, a truck chauffeur. So the chief at the time said, oh, you got a chauffeur, Williams will drive. And Williams said, no, I'm not a qualified chauffeur because then it was overtime. So it wound up, they called me and I, I wound up getting the tour. So thanks. Well, like I said, we're friends. I wound up in 292. Roughly a year later, Tommy had gotten promoted. He was in the 4 6 battalion. He comes to Rescue 4. So here we are working in Rescue 4. Mutual. There was no sock at the time. There wasn't. A, I wound up, I, I, I worked a lot of mutuals in 4. And I used to kid with one. One night with up and down South Jamaica's burning. We went up and down Queens Boulevard, I don't know, half a dozen times and sent back. And I getting back the next morning, they said, Hey, what'd you do last night? I said, I don't know. I said, You guys must be the the number one U turn specialist. <laughs> the boomerang. The boom. <laughs> so, I, I I broke him on that, and I also another time I said, another time up and down. I call, I, I said you're the Queens Boulevard bull uh, pothole inspectors. I called them. <laughs> it was all and 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 the guy that took it the the series didn't like it so much was John Dillon, and I don't Duke. know John had such a reputation. I mean, he came out of three rescue three. Uh, as a fire, and he went to four. And John, John was a fireman's fireman, and fine. Another story with John: New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve after me. John had all the figures for rescue. Puts it on the board, and I look. I said, "That's all you did." I said, two ninety two." I said. We outdid you guys. We got, we are. Well, he baloney, blah, blah. I said, well, I, I better go, you know, better do something. So I go upstairs. And at that time, we didn't have all this electric. You had all the honesty program. Well, I took the, from January to December, the eraser. <laughs> well, by the end of the year, I got 60 more workers or whatever I needed to edge to out the work to. And I go down. I said, you see, John, we outworked you guys. Uh, yeah, I love it. It. That's <laughs> and stuff. really nobody knew the story but me until I could convey it after another awesome. few weeks. That's awesome. <laughs> but this is what I, I mean. What, that, that was it. Another time, I just made lieutenant. Like I said, they call me Lou. I'm upstairs, and that was December. What's the end of December? All the annual reports that got to go in. Huh? There's a half a dozen reports. Nobody told me about these reports. I'm a new lieutenant. No, nobody passed the word. You know? I get a call. Battalion, battalion. Hey, you got those reports? I'm coming over to pick up because I got to get them to the division today. What the... I go through, start them out. What do I got to do? So I go to the typewriter. The battalion chief shows up, and I'm up there. And he says, "You finished yet?" I said, "No, chief." I said, "I didn't. E I didn't even get out of Peck and Poor Institute, and I'm still punching letters here." So, <laughs> so, oh man! So he says, "All oh, right, I can. Oh, I can. when you finish, you bring them to the division." It's in the uh, bag. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Then I wound up uh, in uh, 81 and getting promoted to captain. And that was it. That was that was terrific. And talking about covering the rescue. And I I covered I I'm here I am a, a covering captain and whatnot, vacation here. I'm home one day. And I get a call. It's the division. Yeah. I said, I'm not doing it. No, no. 
will you work in rescue? I said, will I work in rescue? I said, yeah, why? I said, well, we got, hey, there's OT and nobody wants to work in rescue. Will you work in rescue? <laughs> For overtime, why not? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I wound up a few tours with the overtime in rescue. And these weren't two, usually overtime was always following your, one of your day tours or following one of your night tours. But I went to rescue, it was rescue too, that I wound up working in. And I wound up, Tom the Coleman, in, in one, I'm, I'm in 138 one day, covering for Robando, another captain. And a couple of firemen in there, there was a guy I played ball with, in fact, I, I said, McMahon. He says, hey, Charlie, why don't you find out? Robando's going to be, he got injured here. He's going to be out a while. Maybe you could cover him. So I called 14th Division. The 14th Division, the aide right away knew me. He said, yeah, Charlie, why not? So I told him the story. He says, Charlie, he says, you have to get released from the 10th Division. You're in the 10th Division. So I said, oh, God. He says, so, all right. So the next day, I'm still in 138. I said, well, I'll, I'll find out. So I call. Before I could get to the 10th Division, the 10th Division called me. And the 10th Division says, uh, effective your night tours, Cap, you're in 147. I said, oh. Nice. So I went to 147. I was in 147 for uh, about five months. That's a great um, place. It was. Wow. Now, at the time, from 147, Jerry O'Donnell was the, a lieutenant there, and he was detailed to Charlie Hines, the commissioner because he knew Hines, and Hines, who became the fire commissioner, and he didn't know the operations of the fire department, so he brought Jerry down there. When Jerry went down to work with Hines, they put in a guy that they took, Mike Burke. Mike Burke went into that lieutenant spot. Well, okay, fine, no problem. What happens? The word goes out, Tommy, Tommy Coleman, Tommy Coleman's going to retire, you know? So, Jerry, would you be, you know, interested in one? I said, in a heartbeat, I said, uh, 147. So he says, all right, what happens, though? Within that week or 10 days, Mike Burke got promoted to captain. And Imagine course, that. <laughs> Mike Burke, all he did was change groups and put a different helmet <laughs> He wound up the captain of 147, oh, and I wound up, I went out wherever I went, but covering again. But anyway, what happens is a, a fireman at 248, uh, uh, Dave Radenberg, he was a chauffeur there and very good friends with the Solon family in Valley Stream. He knew him and his wife from the kid, as when the kids grew up. But anyway, he says, hey, Charlie, Mahula, he's the captain. He's going to, re, he's going to retire in a, in a month or so. I told him, yeah? Well, hey, Jerry, this is Charlie. So, Jerry, I said, I hear from Mahula. He says, why? You would want 248? I said, of course I would want 248. Okay. Well, made out a transfer form, went down right to the 10th Division, and who's down there at the time is Clancy, Ed Clancy. Now, Clancy, I knew as a fireman, he was in 229 when I was in 104. So him, oh, child, blah, 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 you know. And, of course, when I first made Catholic, it was times when I was detailed to 239 where the 10th Division was quartered. I, and, but anyway, fun. So he looks at the train. He says, you really want to? Fly? I said, yeah, I want. He says, okay. He says, we'll approve it. Well, I wound up with 248, thanks to, thanks to God. And hey, Cap, what was that like over there at that time? Uh, Crazy, that was, right? Uh, hey, we had fires. We 
maybe I, I didn't catch the real bad ones, but I mean, we had fires. I mean, it, it was it was a, a company. Let's face it. I had a load of probies there. That was a story I had with Stell. But anyway, we have I had a load of probies that 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 company. They were fire hungry, so to speak, nice. you know. <laughs> if there was an all hand, hey, don't we go? What are we? Are we on a second or what? Are we? They, they were down at the house watch desk when they, they were shopping. Going. They were going, they wanted, you know, <laughs> they went, they got the officers, the same thing. No, nope. every officer, we had an officer that took care of fire, fire prevention. He says, Cap, he says, one thing I'll tell you, I don't work neutrals. I said, yeah, that's fine, Jimmy. I don't care. He says, I, if it's all right with you, I'd like to take care of fire prevention. I said, hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> cha -ching. He had everything. Come back. If you had to go out on buildings, he had the buildings on, on a oh, I love hose, that guy. A hose clip of the building that you should be That taking. you had to do? Oh, love that guy. Cool. The same thing, but terrific. that's how I did it. You did do what? <laughs> oh, would they? What? What? <laughs> we get this fire, and it's it's in. Oh, what would you say? A, a beauty shop supply area, and it was right right up Snyder Avenue. All the wigs, uh, almost to almost the one seven. Maury's wigs, they don't come off even in water. <laughs> But anyway, when we get there, I mean, plenty of smoke. Get in there. It, it's downstairs. Where's the door? We couldn't find no door. It was like a secret door that had closed around a shelf. So go around the back, force the window, and all the stock, the stock is up over the shelves and whatnot. I took the company across the stock to with the hose line. And well, there's a fellow that remembers the fire, Jimmy Rod. He was, a, became, he was an, became an officer anyway. And we wound up getting to the fire with the hose. By that time, then another company oh, found the door. But we had to, what we had to do was climb over the stock that oh, was shit. on these shelves and the floor was still six feet below us. <laughs> but this is, I, I don't know. I think what? it. I think of some of the fires going back to like two ninety two. I I got into a, a a pretty good standing with some of the chiefs, and I guess I did some of the good things when there should have been. I mean, fire. While I was in two ninety two, there was a fire. Two eighty eight. In fact, was went in the front door, but I saw a side door, and I oh, so I took 292, and we went in the well, the side door down the stairs. That was where the fire was. So, okay, good job. The old Brooklyn mentality, rough. I, yeah. I was working a mutual and rescue, and we have a commercial place, and 136 and 287. They're in rescue 292 is there. Heavy smoke condition, no fire. They can't find a fire. The same thing. They say, hey, let's go down the side of the building. Go down the side of the building, and there's two doors on there. And Arnie Marcus, should I show you? Now he's in four. He goes to, I said, no, 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 Arnie. Force this door because. What I saw in the structure, like they, there could be a front and a rear of this building. So when he forced this door, the staircase, and down the stairs, the battalion, this is rescue. Have, have the company engine, probably 290, bring their line. We got the fire down here in the basement. And oh, my deputy, the deputy, whenever a deputy, I have, when I showed you that fire in Brooklyn with the fifth alarm, who was, I was detailed to the engine, who was the captain at that time? It was Captain Clennon. He was the captain there. And by the time I got to 292 and whatnot, he was, the chief. Years later, he was the deputy chief. 
That's always it nice. Was in the same group. So whenever we had a fire, and that was another thing. That's great. One of the firemen said, hey, when I went to a fire with somebody, the officer would, would always say, hey, Lou, or hey, Cap. He says, when we go to a fire, hey, Charlie, come here. <laughs> so that's what, and that one job, we had a second, a, a multiple in, uh, in uh, Elmhurst, and we get in there, and we, I, we might have been last to win. We weren't first to win a second. So they would, they might have been third. But anyway, we get there, and it's Chief Clennon. And he says, and the fire's up. He says, hey, Charlie, you were in the truck. Tell you guys, go get a couple of hooks and go up and overhaul. I don't have to, I don't have to call another truck. <laughs> <laughs> the guys, what the? What the hell are you doing? Yeah, right, right. We're a truck company. <laughs> <clears throat> Cap, let's talk about, uh, it says, I'm trying to make this out. Uh, you fell through the floor or you fell three floors? Or yeah, well, I was 248. Now, I'm at, yeah, in, uh, in 248, we, it was a vacant building. We were second due. We came in and we, the fire was on a second and third floor by this time. And we took a line. We were going to the third floor. Got up to the third floor, the door was open into the apartment, and it's 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 coming out real good. We didn't I didn't have water in the line yet. So I called for water and I said to the nozzle, Jimmy Day, I said, as soon as we get water, we go give it a shot and we'll go move in. Okay. Well, just about the time the water hit the 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 the, 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 the stairs gave way from under us and down we went. We were in a standing position, it's funny. Going down, they knew we we fell. They grabbed Jimmy Day, but I was on the extra, I went all the way. So I wound up in the hospital. Uh, in fact, the battalion chief thought I broke my leg at that, but no, I didn't break my back. It was a neck and back injury. I had. But I hit the floor, and at that time, yeah, I had Scott uh, Scott on, so that added to the oh yeah, I guess the bounce. But what was that like falling three floors? So I'm down. Hey, I thank, believe I'm I can alive. Fly. Thankful I'm alive, and I didn't lose consciousness. Huh. Got me, rescue got me to the hospital. I was there five or six days. That was that was terrible because I even had the. The union captain, uh, I forget his name, but he came in. Charlie, as soon as we get a room, we'll get you in. The they put me in. They, <clears throat> they wound up putting me into a ward, and there was six, six of us in there. And let's face it, downstate, you know, they don't have the greatest reputation. And the people there, could, I thought, could care the less for you. In fact, I got more care from my own company. Mike, 248 brought me meals <laughs> while I was there. Well, and okay, I was out a while. I went back to work. When I get back to work, I'm standing in quarters and a department vehicle pulls up. And yes, the gas pump that we had, different department vehicles came to our quarters to fill up. Well, who pulls, who steps out of the car but Jerry O'Donnell? And Jerry O'Donnell, you're back? When did you come back? I said, this is my son. I was here yesterday, now I'm here today. Oh, if we knew that, you would have gotten the girl. The girl was scheduled for 248, but because the captain was on medical leave, they didn't want to put the girl there. Oh my God! Is that right? So they sent the girl to two fifty engine, and over there, they love her. She, they, they, they said even the, the captain I wound up knowing over there, Santiago Santos. He was the captain. He was a lieutenant in two twenty one. He wound up. He was the captain over there, and yeah. In fact, Sandy, when they were. Put me out of a job. Sandy called up. He says, "Hey, 
you want your retirement? You want us to get your pay? Because the commissioner was pushing me out of the job. How much you know about the second fine at 147 Yeah, well, anyway, well, getting, okay, go, I'll go backtrack a little. After I got back from the fall, a few months later now, a few about four months later, I go out if, and it's February 1st at night and we go down and uh, we're getting almost to two, uh, 113, 214, uh, their quarters. There's a Queen Anne and the fire is coming out a couple of floors. Oh, 249 went in, they were going into the sun because the the, apparently the chief got there. He was worried about an exposure and the fire was coming out of that fr lapping on the exposure was only a few feet away. So he, they went that way, but 248 went in the front door and we fought fire. We fought fire for, for three floors. And I mean, it was, we just were in and out. But, and you know what a Queen Anne was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, with different stairwells and different spots and what, but we got up there. And who was the truck? The truck that was wound up in there was 132 truck. And 132 truck, that lieutenant said, hey, Cap, right? I'll follow you anywhere because we were ordered out of the building. And I told the battalion, I said, we're not leaving. We're not finished yet. When we're finished, we'll let you know. Five more minutes. And this was that building, and that that was my last fire. I was aching, hurting myself, and another fire. We got downstairs. By that time, the medical officer was there, Soren, Chief Soren, and he says, "Oh," and he knew he was the orthopedic doctor I had seen prior. So he says, "Oh, okay, Cap, you're hurting, huh?" He says, "Well, I know what's hurt." Your firefighting days are over. That's it. I'll see you at the medical office. Yeah, at Forty-one least years ago, without the blaze of glory ago, today. Yeah, you know. that's today. That's right. All oh, right, February first, your yeah. last fire. Forty February years ago first. today. Wow, yeah. how, how how cool is that, huh? If you're talking about it. That's right. <clears throat> you went out in a, in a blaze of glory, though, there, Cap. Well, and it's to come. Yeah. I don't know if you have to, a story with Chief Stout. Uh, Chief Stout. <laughs> what a minute. He just passed away. Mm. Uh, two weeks oh, ago, he passed away. Oh, he, shit. What, what a chief. Now you realize, the guy was 95, almost 96 years old. Mm. I'll away. take that, Ruffy. And he he no, was a, no, once he got out, he, he organized annual uh, annual lunches. For whoever wanted to come, He there was an annual lunch. And it was always the third day before Thanksgiving. And he says, remember that. Thanksgiving's on a Thursday. It's the week before. And we used to have and uh, huge turnouts. It was always a great day. Well, anyway, um, my first year there, right? So I wound up. It, there's six. I have four probies and two other young guys that barely have a year on a job. And they were put into vacation groups that were prime for the summer. Well, I took it upon myself to ask the chauffeurs, hey, you want a partial summer? They didn't have it. You split with this probably. But well, when I sent the paperwork in, Stell's on the phone, what the heck are you doing? You get me locked up. You realize the overtime you'll be increasing. <laughs> yep. So, but he worked. He worked things out. Some of the guys got it. Got it. Smoothed it out. He, and that was the only time I had any anybody from the battalion to come down. And, <laughs> oh, I had more than that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, Drilling, if there wasn't a set drill we were supposed to do, I let the members, what do you want to drill on? Mm. Some of the members they want. And at that time, we had recessive, recessive Annie, the battalion, would 
they rotate it. So we might have had, and the other one we had the defibrillator uh, uh, mm -hmm. that the battalions were carrying. And the guys would want to use that. When do we use it, what not, how? And we let them drill. So zap each other. It was, it, to me, it was a, a, a captain's dream home. Yeah, I got you. You had, you had your own bedroom upstairs. <laughs> you could lock the door and put yourself and everything. So, you Cap, know, we're going to uh, everything. We're going to move on to uh, the old school tip of the day, unless you have anything else that you wanted to talk about. Well, oh, um, who are these guys? There they are. My three sons. Da, 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 da. You, got, you got a medal at that. William and Charlie. And yeah, they were great guys. And I got to thank them. Nobody came back to me and said, Yo, your sons are so and so, and whatnot. It was all plus. I had, a, I had even Bill, the, even, <laughs> Bill. even <laughs> Bill. And I got. I spoke to. One day I spoke to Jack Cleehouse. Now, Jack Cleehouse. No, I knew Jack when he was in 108. And he Get was him on the show, will you? I mean, we've heard that name a lot in like the last two weeks. Well, anyway. At one of our breakfasts, why not? I saw so he says, You know, Charlie, I worked with Dennis and I worked with Charlie. Well, Dennis, when Jack was a captain, he was in 126. Dennis was the chauffeur. So he knew Dennis pretty well. Jack became chief, right? Where is he in the 4 6 battalion? Where's Charlie? He's the captain of two of uh, of uh, 287. Was in with the 4 6. So he says, the only one I didn't work with, he says, I worked with you. He says, is your son, Bill. I didn't work with him, you know? So They all, they all wound up in some good spots. I don't know how that happened, Ruff. Oh, yeah. And because of all, I guess a reputation was built. And if you get remembered from here, there, and whatnot, I guess you were doing something right. That's true. I think you did all right there, Cap. Now things, you know, if I could pass anything on, I could say, as a fireman, there's so many times firemen, you, you get assigned to a company you don't know anything about. So don't come in with an attitude, come in and learn what's going on in that firehouse. Get used to their routine. You might've heard about a routine in a different firehouse. This firehouse where you're in has their own little routine. And listen to what the probies have. And feel your way around. Learn how they do things. And pay attention. Don't be a, a mouth and come try to come off that you're a know-it-all. Yeah, Gonzo. Yeah. <laughs> Just <gonna> what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> <be bad news. laughs> And, hey, just gonna say that. That's good advice. Yeah. yeah. There's times. Hey. hey, we didn't get to give him the old school tip of the day. That's all right. Won. He rolled right into it. He I rolled right into it. I was gonna. When I was bouncing. I wound up uh, as being surplus captain. I wound up uh, in in Manhattan, and I would have to roll call the same thing. Any new? You're in a new firehouse. You don't know what they're going on. I say, hey, listen, guys. I'm from Brooklyn. I said, I'm not not Manhattan. What do you guys do? Well, one of the first things they had me was a bag, the standpipe bag. Yeah, right. The officer carried the tools to the standpipe. Yeah. Yep. Some of these companies, I mean, came in with their masks on, on a hand cart <laughs> because they would be going into a building that might require, them, but the masks would be brought to the floor that they need, and that's where they would darn them. Understood. Sure. Oh. Where, where are the IT guys? Let's see the IT guys, Cap. What? The, the IT guys, guys, the computer guys. Where are they? Where are they? Who knows? Where, where's Bill? Where's Bill? Let's see a picture. Let, let's see him. Tell him poke he's, his he's head in there. Out. He's, he's, he's giving he's, me some hand signs. He's yeah. like, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm giving him oh. salutes. Guys, oh, I I you salute. thanks a bunch. Much appreciated. Thank you, brother. Hey, Thank you for... You, Taking time to there, listen there, to my dad. something. 
And then yeah. I know when I get home, I'm going to get a third degree because my, my <laughs> wife's aides love the stories. Because I'm always bringing a family from one of the five houses for a family. And it got so that when somebody comes in, I said, if you want to know anything about a, a Solon family, ask the aide. There you uh, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, Cap, uh, it was a pleasure. It, it was, was an absolute pleasure. pleasure. I never yeah. thought it would work this way, but boy, it did me well. It did Good me for I, you. I would say, hey, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed your stories. You know? Uh, Guys, I want to thank you, Louie. Thank you, because it's been two years in the making since that thing was posted on Instagram. I'm glad we got him. Yeah. And I, I, and I hope he goes another 50 years, baby. Yeah. Oh, hey, if it's my la my wife lasts that long, fine. <laughs> hope so. Yeah. Hope so. She, hey, after that, she keeps me going every day. I know I got to get up to take care of her, so that gets me out of bed every morning. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, He's a good man. Hey. And these All guys, right, Cap State. these guys are in in a house. I I should have a revolving door on the front. Because, <laughs> yeah, in and out. They're know. always in the kitchen and the, the refrigerator. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, again, have a great night, guys. Thanks, Thanks. again. Thank All you. right, Cap. Hold, hold, hold on, on one a second. second. Guys, we got to do the uh, we got to do the old school health and safety tip, bud. Yes, we do. Yes. God do. bless you all. Thanks again. Just hang on one Cap. second there, Cap. Hang, hang one second, Cap. Hang one, one second. second. You got me. You got Hold on. The First Responder Center for Excellence is a not-for-profit organization dedicated to protecting the lives and livelihoods of first responders. Their education and research initiatives aim to bring greater awareness and understanding the challenges to the health, safety, and well-being of firefighters, EMS personnel, and other first responders, too. They are an affiliate of the National Fallen Firefighter Foundation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's old school health and safety tip is use your SCBA during overhauling and car fires. The actions you take today to best protect your health will pay dividends long into the future. Your future self will thank you. Right, guys? Sure, there we go. That's it. Remember to come out and see me and Louis booth 142 starting tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday at the Nassau Coliseum at the Buffapalooza. Come on out. We'll be there. Boom. All right. That's it. That's all I got. Captain Charlie, great life, great stories. You're a gentleman and a I scholar. Hope I added to something. You did. Uh, okay, you guys. Made me smile and laugh. So <laughs> appreciate it. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, there's more laughs behind this, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll have you on again. With individuals, with instances. Nothing vicious or violent. Uh, 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 not all, vicious all, all, your body. all laughable things. Good show. Sure. All laughable sure. things. Uh huh. All right, guys. So we will see you. If we don't see you at the show tomorrow, we'll see you what Monday night. We got Monday. Paulie Solman Paulie coming Solman. on. Fresh Big yeah. show. Big show. <laughs> Paulie Solman he used to he used to calf shame me all the time. He's got big calves. So all right. <laughs> I'll see you uh, soon. Stay low and go. There All right, is. everybody. We'll see you at the big one. Go. Good night. Thanks again, Cap. Bye. All right. Good night, like, guys. Remember, hook up and look up, baby. <laughs> oh, he's going with that one now. He's going with that I'll change one. it up for a little while. Keep All right, guys. All right. Good night, everyone. <laughs>